Auckland Airport's domestic and international terminals were forced to close. Thousands of disgruntled passengers were trapped in planes, turned back in mid-air or found themselves stuck in a wet terminal building for the night. Lucy Thompson has the story. The rain has stopped, but the clean-up is only just getting started. With crews at Auckland International Airport still pumping out thousands of litres of water from inside the terminal. You can see just how much water is still trapped in the basement and elevator shafts of the building. The domestic terminal has done relatively well. It, w it wasn't as significant there, so there is some tidy up, but, but no damage. We're still assessing here internationally. But you don't have to look far to see just how extensive the damage is and the sheer scale of disruption caused to passengers. This is the current state of Auckland International Airport. Thousands of passengers lining the walls, waiting to hear when and if they'll be able to leave. Steve and Cheryl Thurgood were supposed to fly to Brisbane last night after attending a funeral. Instead, they were among passengers forced to sleep on the floor without food, water or any of their belongings. Everywhere's booked. Yeah. We handed back the rental car. We haven't got money to go get another car. We haven't got money to go stay somewhere. Yeah. So we're, we're here. The disruption to flights was initially sparked after a landing plane hit and damaged several runway lights. The team did an excellent job in getting that repaired within about 90 minutes. But by then, widespread flooding had set in inside the terminal, grounding all planes and forcing the closure of the airport altogether. And with the terminal underwater, all inbound flights were either cancelled, turned around or diverted to places like Christchurch. We were in the air probably circling for about an hour and a half before we knew what was going on. Um, they didn't tell us it was weather or anything. It was honestly crazy. We were 30 minutes out from Auckland at the time and then we got the call that um, we were diverting to Christchurch. Eight other flights were also forced to land there last night, leaving thousands of travellers stranded and in the dark. Waiting in line to work out where we're going to go. We don't know where we're going to go or what we're going to do. Passengers in Auckland were so frustrated with the lack of communication, they even hijacked our press conference, demanding answers from the Auckland Airport CEO. Has the communication from Auckland Airport been up to scratch? We worked really hard, but I have no doubt there will be learnings out of it. In the meantime, it's shaping up to be another long night for many travellers here. Well, Lucy Thompson joins us now from Auckland Airport. And Lucy, are those passengers able to fly yet? Well, Laura, the good news is, is some passengers have been able to board their flights today with the domestic terminal reopening around midday today. As for passengers here at the international terminal, well, they've been told the first flight isn't scheduled to take off until at least 5am tomorrow morning at the earliest. So as you can imagine, there's still plenty of tired, frustrated and grumpy passengers here uh, waiting for answers, others frantically trying to rebook their flights. Now, of course, while some have been able to make their way home, the real concern is for passengers who don't have friends and family in Auckland and where they're going to stay tonight. Of course, it is a long weekend here and we've heard many hotels and motels are actually fully booked. So it's shaping up to be another long and uncomfortable night for passengers still waiting to travel. Mm, Lucy Thompson live from Auckland Airport. Thanks for the update.